Hi, this is Jay from the band We Know Name. If you've been reading our album sleeve, you may have come across the four points, but I just want to quickly explain them to you now. Point one is God loves me. That's right, God loves us. Christians say that quite a lot, but for two very good reasons. Firstly, because it's true. And secondly, because not a lot of people really know it. Everybody, whether they admit it or not, is looking to be loved unconditionally, to find someone who will love us no matter what. But the truth is, even the love of our family, friends, boyfriends and girlfriends won't ever be able to match up to that true, unconditional love that God already has for you. He made you and then he set guidelines for you to live by so that you can get the most out of life. Now because God is perfect and can do no wrong, it makes sense that the lifestyle he wants us to lead is exactly the same. Unfortunately, all of us as human beings make mistakes, sometimes the same ones over and over again. And that's what the second point is. I have sinned. Romans chapter 3 says all have turned away from God. They have all gone wrong. And it's true, isn't it? The Bible calls this desire to live our own way instead of God's way, sin. And the blunt truth is, the ultimate penalty for sin is death. However, that chapter goes on to say, but now God's way of putting people right with himself has been revealed. So even though we disobeyed God by choosing to live a lifestyle that separated us from him, he made a way for us to be reunited. And that leads on to point three. Jesus died for me. God sent his only son, Jesus Christ, down to this earth to become a human being. But he was no ordinary man. Because he was the son of God, Jesus was both 100% man and 100% God. This meant that when he was faced with the same everyday temptations that confront us, like lying or stealing, unlike us, he was able to resist every single time. So because there was no sin inside of him, he lived the perfect, blameless life, right up until the age of 33 when he was imprisoned, beaten, whipped, and finally nailed to a cross where he died a painful death. You might be thinking that's pretty unjust, but it isn't really. Because in order for mankind to enjoy that close relationship with their father, someone had to take the punishment for our sin, and Jesus chose to be that sacrifice. But the story doesn't end just yet. You see, three days later, Jesus defeated death by coming back to life, proving once and for all that the power of God has no equal. As Christians, we believe that he's got this amazing place waiting for us in heaven. And when we die down here on earth, like Jesus, we will be raised back to life this time to live forever. That eternal place in heaven alongside God is waiting for you, waiting for you to admit your sins to him, to accept Jesus' sacrifice for you, and to ask him into your life so that you can enjoy that personal friendship. And that's exactly what point four is. I must decide to live for God. If you do want to make that choice, then you can read Psalm 51. It's a chapter in the Bible that you can say as a prayer to God, and it reflects exactly what I've just been talking about. Also make sure that you speak to someone who you know has been a Christian for a while, so that they can help you. In a way, it's easy, isn't it? But actually living the Christian lifestyle is full of trials and tests. The flip side is, you have someone who will always be there by your side, who will never leave or forsake you. All of us in the band with no name have experienced God's power and love in our own individual lives, so we want as many people as possible to hear the good news of what Jesus has done for them you've had the chance to hear it now. The question is, what will you choose to do about it? Are you going to accept him or are you going to reject him?